Welcome to our preview of this weekend's Premier League football. I'm Emma Jones and I'm joined by Nick Bry and Statman Dave. As our guest this week, Nick is of course an Arsenal fan and we're going to focus in particular on Watford v Arsenal, but we'll be talking about all 20 Premier League clubs. Make sure you let us know what you think of this video in the comments below. So let's start with Watford v Arsenal. Only four games into the season and bottom of the table, Watford have sacked Javi Grazia and new manager Kike Sanchez Flores returns for his second spell at the club. Nick, do you think this changes how Unai Emery is going to approach the game? Nah, surely not. Just just because there wouldn't have been enough time to work through things on the training pitch. Um, you know, they would have set up a particular way for Watford. Plus, Watford have still got the same personnel, the same yeah. players. So I think that Unai Emery would have set his team up to cope with those players. And I don't think this change in uh, manager for Watford would have changed his plan for this match. Also, although every game is a challenge, he's probably not going to be too afraid of taking on Watford in their current state, is it? Yeah, I mean, if it was like, you know, Manchester United yeah. just changed their manager, which some Man United fans want already, but, you know, Manchester United <laughs> <laughs> might have changed their manager, then it could be different, you know. Uh, but with, with a team like Watford, with all due respect to them, they're bottom of the table, they've not had a good start. So, you know, Emery probably thinks, irrespective of what Kike yeah. Sanchez-Flores brings, Arsenal have got enough in the tank to beat him. Absolutely. Uh, so, Statman Dave, based on what we've seen so far, do you think that Arsenal fans can expect an improvement on last season's fifth place and Europa League final this season? I think, yeah. I think the big thing is finding Emery's best team. I think at Sevilla, there was a massive turnover of his stars. Mm -hmm. Rakitic went, Benega went, uh, Gramero went, Carlos Baca went. And Emery always used to take a little bit of time to find that perfect blend, be it in midfield, be it in attack. You know, if his midfielder went, it'd take him time to find that replacement. But I think he's got a squad now that he can do that. I think at PSG, he had the sort of financial muscle to go, I want this player or that, but player power at PSG is absolutely nuts. Yeah. Don't think that's the same Arsenal. I think Arsenal, the players respect him in a way and they will work hard for him and they'll try to get the best out of him. I think it's all about engaging those partnerships. Lacazette and Aubameyang, the two centre-backs, uh, Socrates and David Luiz, can they start to perform and play well together? The full-backs, though, for me, is going to be so big. When Bellerin is back and when Tierney comes in, that changes the game. Emery is, is the way that he creates those chances. It's down the flanks. It's with his fullbacks overlapping. And that's going to be vital. Massive. Absolutely. We've got Arsenal's lineup from their last game on screen. And as we're recording this, the latest injury news is that Lucas Torreira is a doubt after being subbed before half time in Uruguay's 2 1 win over Costa Rica. You got it about that, man. Yeah, I am. Um, how do you think the side could set up then against Watford? Um, in terms of could and how I want them to, I want to see the three up top. That's mm -hmm. what I want to see. Just because. I, I, I just really want to see us demolish a team. And, and now's a chance, you know, if we're being honest, let's go for the jugular. Uh, I've already said Watford, bottom of the table, really struggling. Uh, the back line's a bit weak there, so I'd love to see our front three against their back line. Uh, I want to see uh, Danny Ceballos getting a run in the team as well, um, just because the game that he had against, uh, was it Burnley? Yeah, fantastic oh, against Burnley. It was yeah. unbelievable. And I, and I know people go, oh, but in the next game, you know, Liverpool, he wasn't all that. But to go away at Anfield and expect a new yeah. signing to perform, mm. it's very hard, you know. So, Sabayos in there. Uh, next, Matteo Genduzzi. I think he's deserving of a place in the side now. Um, based on the fact that he's so energetic, just got a call up to the France, um, you know, uh, first team squad as well, which is great for him. So, he's brimming with confidence. And then it... It, I don't want to say pains me because I don't want to get on any player's back or anything. You kind of know where I'm going with this. Don't you? <laughs> he may already be off the pitch, I think. Uh, <laughs> I think Granit Xhaka yeah. uh, is, is going to start the game. Uh, Unai Emery loves him. He loves Granit Xhaka. And, it, and you it, don't. It, well, it, I think I just want to see a more... Um, like people always talk about Granit Xhaka's passing. That was one of the things that always came up. You know, he's got a great pass and blah blah. We don't. I, I don't. I feel like as Arsenal fans, we don't see it enough or consistently enough for me anyway. And uh, he makes a lot of mistakes, mm -hmm. gives away penalties and free kicks all over the place. So it's frustrating. Um, but you know, he is kind of our one of our many captains. We've got this five captains thing yeah. going on. He's one of them, so he's probably going to captain the side. And then uh, I'm going for a back four, um, and we've got no real choice at the moment. No, K Kalasinac. Uh, has to start, even though he's more of a, a wing back than a than a um, full back. But you know he's he'll, he's got to go in there. Um, and then the the defense kind of writes itself. Louise, uh, Papa, 
Socrates, uh, <laughs> and then uh, on the other side we have got Ooh. Maitland Niles. The name was slipping my mind. But yeah, <laughs> uh, Maitland Niles. Even though he's not a, a, a defender either, mm. uh, I'm really looking forward. You touched on it earlier. I'm so looking forward to Hector Bellerin and Kieran Tierney being in this squad because we've seen how Liverpool now um, so many of their chances. In fact, the majority of their chances are coming down the wing. I think Arsenal will replicate that with the likes of Aubameyang uh, and Nicola Pepe, and then just behind them we'll have um, Tierney and Bellerin. So that's what I'm really looking forward to. But that's my lineup for the next game. That's what you, that's what you think could happen. That's what I think could happen. Okay. But for this, for, for, well, that's what I want to happen. Yeah. And that's what I'm going to go for. That's actually. what you're going I've with. changed my mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm being definitive. Yeah, you are. Yeah. Right, Statman Dave, uh, we've spoken with Nick about Arsenal's front three in depth in a video that you can watch via the description below. So if we look at another aspect of their side, uh, their midfield, there seems to be as many questions for Unai Emery to figure out there as well doesn't there? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a big point is Nick goes through a number of players in there, Lucas Torreira, whether he starts or not, is that the best choice? I think what Emery needs to maybe understand and work with is, does he want to play a, you know, a player like Granit Xhaka at the base of midfield with two sort of shuttlers, with Torreira and um, Gwendozi, you know, acting in, in this sort of box to box role, pushing forward and, and dropping back? Or does he add that playmaker and higher up the pitch? And I think the interesting side with Granit Xhaka, sometimes I feel he's he makes the wrong choices. He plays people into trouble. Yeah. I think last season it was it, it put Arsenal in a, in a worse position because they didn't have David Luiz. Mm. If you give David Luiz the ball at centre half, he will play. It yeah. doesn't matter where he is on a pitch, he will play. So that helps him out a little bit. But you've got to get Ceballos into the team. I think we saw um, for Real Betis, we saw for you know for Spain under 21s that this guy when he's on the ball, when he's in form, could be one of the best players in the Premier League. I think the Arsenal game was a bit unfortunate, played at the tip of a diamond, not really where you'd want to play him. In that game, I would have played him slightly deeper. So it's going to be a big sort of uh, time for him to really push forward. I think he did well against the pressure against Burnley. There was a lot of rough challenges. They were going in on him hard, but he, he was riding it. And I think he's a, he's a Premier League ready player. And I think he's needed, as we mentioned uh, on the, the other video, that look, you know, to feed that front, yeah. front three. They need somebody there. If you play Grant Xhaka, it's too deep. And I think the link with the Lucas, uh, that Torreira and Guendouzi will give the front line isn't quite good enough. I think both are defensive midfielders. I don't think that's unfair yeah. to say. But having that link man, having the guy to play the passes is going to be vitally important. What, what I will say is uh, Torreira, if he's fit, I go for that as well. Yeah. Just, 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 just putting that just out there. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but I, I don't think he's fit enough. And, and even if he does make the squad, I don't think Unai Emery will start him. And we'll see Granit Xhaka in there. I, I just know it. I think the other interesting side there is if, if you know, when the team is fit, when maybe you could look across the bench and you know you want to play another attacking player in the lineup. Something that I think Emery needs to do is if he's gonna drop out maybe Gwendozi and keep Lucas Torreira in, is is play with Sabaos in that deeper position to allow him to play make from deeper. Emery is so so good at that. Rakitic, Benega. Yeah. Past players that have done that, but I don't think he's quite got that with Arsenal yet, that he's got this player that he can play at number ten, can play at midfield. And that's why Sabaos for me is one of the signings of the season. Well, people spoke about him when he signed that he can do play an eight or a ten. So we're yet to see it deployed properly, but mm. you know maybe we will. So Nick, we know that Watford have a high turnover of managers. Obviously, new manager uh, just come in again. What do you think this means for them? Is it kind of a restart button? Yeah, I think when new managers come in, you often have that new manager sheen, don't you? Mm. Like uh, I reckon we'll see a turnaround in Watford's fortunes uh, with the new gaffer. Uh, I don't think Watford are a terrible side. I honestly think that they've been underperforming at the start of the season. I don't think they're in danger of being relegated come the end of the season. Uh, and everybody wants to play for the new gaffer. The thing is, when a new manager comes in, players that were previously safe are no longer safe in the starting lineup. So they're going to up their game. And players that aren't already in the starting lineup are still fighting for their place. So um, Watford fans should be quite confident that they'll see their team finally register a win in the Premier League <laughs> yes. this season. So this can only be a positive yeah, thing. definitely um, for me. Cool, right. So if we take a look at Watford's 11 from their one-all draw away to Newcastle, the latest injury news as we record this is that Kike Sanchez-Flores will potentially only have Troy Deeney absent after he underwent a minor knee operation at the end of August. So Statman Dave, how do you think Watford might change from Javi Grazia's era? I think it's an interesting side. In the last game they played three at the back, yeah. Javi Grazia's probably more of a 4 4 two type guy, four five one. So he was trying to change things. They were in a bad run. They didn't one in 10 in the back end of last season. They struggled this at the bottom of the league right now. So 
he needed to do something and obviously he went for this system and I don't think this that Kike Sanchez Flores will continue with this. Again, Kike Sanchez Flores, like Javi Grazia, which is so weird, is a Spanish 4-4-2 manager. Yeah. That kind of makes sense where you have you know, a very hard-working team that will um, defend deep, that will be aggressive in that defensive sense. So, you know, you're looking at someone potentially like a, a De La Feo to come into the side. Again, we'll, we'll just move the system around. It will drop to, to that 4-4-2 um, and De La Feo will probably join Andre Gray up front. And I think that's the interesting side that they have changed their manager, but they're very, very similar managers mm. in a way, how they play, how they react and how they work. So it's not going to be one of those things where these Watford players are going to have no training sessions and they won't know what their new manager wants. They will understand what their new manager wants and it'll be a slightly tweaked version of what they previously had. So it will provide a lot of uh, you know interesting insight in terms of who he chooses. I think Sars an interesting shout as well, whether he comes into the team, a very young attacking player, very exciting on the ball, a dribbler, whether he's out wide or like Flores has done before, playing those players like De La Feo as a striker. So there is definitely questions, but I don't think there'll be that much change. But as you know, as you mentioned before, Nick, new managers, players just go, oh, I fancy playing again now. Yeah. Yeah. I fancy that. I fancy scoring some goals again now. Well, I was going to say, do you agree with Nick that this can only be a positive thing for Watford? I think that the the owners have always made good calls. At Udinese, they made great calls. They were the consistent, like top four team in, in yeah. Serie A when, you know, they weren't, they didn't spend the most money. The signings were excellent. They built this side. They changed manager over and over again, but the club model would stay the same. And I think that's what Watford have done well. Their signings have been really good, but we haven't seen the result results on the pitch yet, especially this season, especially back end last season. But they got to an FA Cup final. So there's definitely progress for the club. And I think you've got to back the manager. I think, if you're looking around what Watford fans were saying last week, they're actually saying, yeah, we actually back the board, which is interesting because yeah. the rest of the modern football fans will be like, no, no you've got to keep the manager. Yeah. They've got yeah. a steady yeah. FA Cup yeah. final. <laughs> yeah. and, and they've got Danny Welbeck now, mate. You know what I mean? Well, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Danny Welbeck could, in fact, you know, the, the big thing with Kike Sanchez Flores at um, Watford was the Troy Deeney link up. Troy Deeney was quite important to the side. Someone like Danny Welbeck, you know, we know what Danny Welbeck can do. Danny Welbeck is not a bad player. Yeah, that guy. That guy could yeah. come back at Watford. Right, then let's take a look at the rest of the weekend's fixtures and just get a little overview from you guys. Is that all right? Yeah. Right, so first off, we've got the early kickoff on Saturday. Newcastle are going to be travelling to Anfield to take on Liverpool for the half 12 kickoff. They're not going to be looking forward to that, are they, Statman Dave? No, I don't think so. I think Newcastle have they've been hard to break down, but this Liverpool team is far too good, I think, for that. I think with Mohamed Salah back in form, the link up with Firmino, they just look like a really good team. And Trent Alexander Arnold coming back into form only. Uh, Kevin De Bruyne has created more big chances in the Premier League than Trent Alexander Arnold has this year. Wow. He's a player that contributes in their attack massively. He's back in form for me. I think they're going to demolish Newcastle and Rafa Benitez. Not yeah. Rafa Benitez anymore, <laughs> is he? Steve yeah. Bruce. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Rafa. And, and Steve Bruce. You forgot that. <laughs> uh, so, so Steve Bruce isn't going to be looking forward to this. No way. Um, although I must say, I absolutely loved watching Newcastle go to the new Tottenham mm. Hotspur Stadium and do the business there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you, you did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but no, the, as Dave's already said, this Liverpool side is something else. Yeah. Um, Liverpool, Manchester City are so strong in comparison to everybody else in the Premier League. And I can see, uh, I can see Liverpool giving Newcastle a real battery. Mm -hmm. Right then. Well, Brighton take on Burnley. Statman Dave, what's your view on that one? It's going to be an interesting one. Mm -hmm. I think the style that Graham Potter's put across is nice. Three at the back, four in midfield, three up. To, they play nice football, but Burnley and Sean Dyche play horrible football. Yes. And it's like this polar sort of efforts of football coming together. And Ashley Barnes is going to win this game, I think, for me. He is in such good form right now. It just looks like he fancies playing against teams that want to play out from the back. I think how um, they dealt with Southampton. They, yeah. It's that type of vibe that they will get chances, they will score a few goals, and then they'll just defend their lives. I, well, I feel like, again, Br Brighton are the Fulham of this season, uh, where you know mm. Fulham came up, they tried to play this nice passing football, and it really didn't work for them. They were getting dismantled and demolished. And I feel like Graham Potter's going to try and do that at Brighton, as Dave has just said, and I don't think he's got the personnel to do it. So... I can see Burnley winning this one, not comfortably, but I think it'll be a close game, but I think Burnley are going to take it. I think they're going to win. Yeah. Right then, one that you're going to be looking after there, Dave, you're going to be looking forward to this. Man United, Leicester City. Yeah, it's going to be a tough one. I think the, the one man that's shining for United at the moment is Dan James. Mm. I think his form for Wales and his form for Manchester United has been really good. I think he fits the system perfectly. United's top scorer this season with the likes of Martial, Rashford, uh, Pogba in there. It's, a, it's an interesting one. I think the blend of the team needs to be better. I think Pogba higher up the pitch, maybe. I think putting another midfielder deeper behind him in there. But there's problems at fullback. Delo's injured, Luke Shaw's yeah. injured. You've got Asher Young and, of course, uh, Aaron Wambazaka playing there. 
It just looks a bit dodge at the moment. Bit but dodge. You've still got to believe in the boys. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is where United are. You know, it's it's crazy to think. You know, because I grew up in the era of Manchester <laughs> United being the best team, like absolutely battering everyone, and now we're looking at Leicester going. It's going to be a tough, tough. one. Yeah. Or, uh, you know, it might be a tough one. Yeah. Uh, but I, I agree. I do think it will be a tough game. But I think Manchester United will win. You know, United are at home. Uh, I, I, I don't think Leicester, for me anyway, have been as impressive yet this season as they were the back end of last season. I know we're only four games deep, so people haven't had time to get going properly. But uh, I think Manchester United will do the business. And Dan James is going to score again. Harry Maguire will score the winner. That's the reason why. Really? I think that's why United Bullet will. header. He's got to. He has to show why he moved to Manchester United. There you go. You it's heard it him. here first. You heard it here first. <laughs> right then, uh, Sheffield United doing all right, actually, since they've been promoted. Up against Southampton. Statman Dave, what they're, was they in? Really impressive against yeah. Chelsea. Yeah. They, they came back after half-time and played with a bit more intensity, a bit more swagger, how they got down the right-hand side of Chelsea. They caused, caused Aston Lequator all types of problems. And even Callum Robinson, they've got a player that, yeah. if he is fit, there's a bit of an injury concern there that... He looks very composed. Yeah. Will score your goals. And I like the overlapping centre-backs. We spoke about their defensive capabilities previously. They're a really good team. and it, But it's a must-win for Southampton. They're also in this really weird patch of form. Drawing with United. Yeah. Great result before the international break. But they need to pick up a win. So it's, it's a big, big game down at the bottom. And this could deal with you know relegation later on in the season. I, it's funny. I thought Sheffield United, when they came up, were just going to get slapped every week. I thought they would be that team, you know, mm. the whipping boys of the Premier League. But they really haven't. They've been pressed. Uh, they've been compact. I like the way that they attack. Yeah. Uh, I, I honestly thought that Aston Villa would be the standout team out of the teams that have been promoted. But uh, I just, I'm enjoying the way Sheffield United are going about their business. And I think, I think Sheffield United are going to win that game. I think I'd agree with you there. I think I agree with you. Account. Right, we've got the London Derby. Spurs take on Crystal Palace. Seven nil to Crystal Palace. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, big score end, prediction. You don't need to speak. Yeah. Seven nil Crystal Palace. It's all the goals coming from uh, Ayu, right up yeah. front. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Next then, Wolves v Chelsea. A tough one. I think Wolves uh, have got the benefit of not playing midweek. I think yeah. the Europa League yeah. is going to cost some points this season in the Premier League. But they beat Chelsea last season, uh, so they, they they can come out of this game. I think that Jota and Jimenez have been good in the Europa League, but not so good in the Premier League. Big game for them. Traore from right wing back, I'd start him, I'd play him. He, he gives them a little bit extra going forward. I think they kind of need that. And Chelsea look so bad at the back, but so good going forward. Tammy Abraham's in great form. Mason Mount is the player that we all knew from watching Chelsea. You from watching Derby County last season, like, he is a player. And Lampard knows that. So I think... I think it's going to be a draw. I think that both teams will score. I, I feel like we're copying each other here, Dave, because I, <laughs> as you were talking, well, I was, um, was going to say this one's going to yeah, be a draw. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, no, you just yeah. said it. But um, all right, just to say something different then, I'm going to say uh, a Wolves win just because ooh, I, I love ooh. Nuno Espirito Santo. Ooh. I love him. So 7 0 to Palace. Yeah. Wolves, Wolves win. win. Arsenal well, go top of the league. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you can see what I'm doing here, yeah. right? <laughs> uh, next, you're going to say then that Norwich are going to beat Man City oh, in the late kickoff. Well, <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. I mean, what, what do you make of this game, Sam? I think it's going to be very open. I think Norwich are going to play their style of football. They're not going to change the way they play, which will cause them problems in games like this. So games mm. against Liverpool, games against City. If you continue to play that way, you'll be opened up. Yeah. And with this, the form Sterling's in, the form Aguero's in, and Kevin De Bruyne right now Unbelievable. is probably the best player on the planet right now, you'd say, in terms of form, what he's doing for Belgium. He was you know, three assists and, yeah. a, and a goal. Like, the man is in serious form. But Timo Pukki, I'd back Timo Pukki to score, but City to win. Pookie party. That's what pookie I'm saying. Yeah, it's, it's a pookie party. But uh, honestly, Dave's already hit the nail on the head. Um, Man City are just way yeah. too strong uh, and they're going to run out of that one winners. I think I'd agree with that. Bournemouth take on Everton uh, afternoon kickoff on Sunday. Weird Everton team. Yeah. Mm. Sometimes they, they play well in, in stages, other times that they don't play well in stages. And Lucas Digny has been key to them playing well, but I think they're a bit too slow at the back. We saw with Michael Keane for England how a lapse in concentration on the ball cost you a goal. And Bournemouth, again, they're in a bit of a weird form as well. They're in a similar position to actually Watford, whereas they went, they finished the season not in great form, but Bournemouth are going to back Eddie Howe. They're going to because yeah. of, of what he's done for the club. But I just think it's going to be a tough game. A tough game, but I think Everton will come out on top on this one. Um, I'm a bit deflated is, is, the, is mm. the, the, the right word in, in how Everton have been playing because I feel like they had a good transfer window. Yeah. Um, the easy signings start as made, well. Yeah, yeah. Easy start. And the yeah. signings they made, I thought... Okay. This is the time. Yeah, we're going to see Everton kick yeah. on a little mm. bit here. And, you know, I've got a few mates who support Everton and they're so furious because they, again, they 
and, and it's happened for a few years at Evan, if we're yeah. being honest. They've, they've always performed quite well in the transfer window and then it's the same old story. The start, mm. poor yeah. start and then it's, eventually they start kicking on at the I back just, end of the season. I just don't understand it, but... Um, I, I'm going to go for a home win for that one. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Again, I, I feel like me and Dave need to have a little bit of difference <laughs> yeah. in opinion. I'm going for a home win. I like it. I like it. Now, obviously, we've spoken about uh, Watford v Arsenal, but have you got anything you'd just like to summarise? I think the uh, Watford 2 0 easy. <laughs> what are you saying? Do, do you know what? I do think it will be closer, cause even though Watford are bottom of the Premier League and, you know, Arsenal are close to the top um, <laughs> I, I, I think it'll be a closer game than a lot of people think but I, I can't see Watford being strong enough to beat Arsenal please don't embarrass me <laughs> I've said it now on, on a camera yeah. people uh -oh. are going to see this on the internet they have to win <laughs> no I don't think it just yeah. for you right Monday as well we've got uh, West Ham travelling to Villa Park Aston Villa kind of need to win this one yeah I think they do it's a big game for them mm. I think they need to win the home games against these middle to bottom yeah. table teams but West Ham are starting to get it right. Sebastian Allaire is yeah. a great player. We all know when they could start to play off him and play around him and create chances for him that they will do well in games. He's a type of player to bring other players in that we've not seen like a target man type player, a little bit like Ed an Edin Dzeko type player. So for me, I'm going to go West Ham, away win, um, unfortunately for Villa this time. Sars Villa. Done. I'm going to go for Aston Villa because, and it's selfish this one, just because Jack Grealish is in my FPL. Yeah. Got, got, got <laughs> to get me some points. Make those selfish, enough, selfish yeah, decisions. <laughs> Come on, lad. <laughs> I'll be back in Aston Villa if I still had John McGinn in my team, but unfortunately I had to let one of my Scottish players go. I'm sorry, John. Right, before you go, Nick, one last thing. The fabled Squawker oh, Challenge. Uh, you can see the current leaderboard on screen. Sam Lee and Jamie Jackson, 24. 24? Paul Machen, 8. Jesse Lingard, 7. Stephen Halston, 6. Right, so I just Are need to get 6. I just need to get 6. Right. I am going to give you 60 seconds to name oh, as my. many Brazilian football clubs as you can, starting now. 60 seconds? I only need 10 because I don't know. That's uh, not the name of a Brazilian Fl football Fl club. Fl Fluminense. Uh, Flamenco. Uh, Vasco de Gama. <laughs> um, Cosmos. Is that a team? No, that's Portuguese, I think. Uh, uh, I think you've got about 30 seconds left here. Uh, Someone help me, give me a clue. Give me a nope, clue. that's not how it Brazil. works. Brazil! <laughs> Couldn't you pick like Spain or somewhere <laughs> like that? Uh, who did Oscar on, play man. for? What's the one that Oscar played for? Inter Milan. Oh, Internacional. Um, Santos. Uh, I'm going to be last on the leaderboard. Uh, Sao Paulo, their, their team. Uh, Carlos Tevez and Javi Mascarano played for. Uh, You're helping me here. Uh, I feel for him. I don't know. Uh, Manaus, have they got a team? I think I'm, time's nearly up here, Nick. No I'm just, pressure. I'm just literally throwing out cities now. Three, Brasilia, two, FC. One. Um, Rio. Time is up. I think Brasilia might be a team. Can we can we can, get that can confirmed? Somebody confirmed. Yeah. Yeah. It. Can we get that confirmed, please? All I care about is not coming last. Yeah. Yeah, Brasilia's a team. Oh, <laughs> the bag. Nick. Come on. Just What's like that? Did Nick seven? Seven points. You got Same seven. as Jesse Lingard. Yes. Come on. Well done, Nick. Well I'm lucky Stephen House and mate. <laughs> Enjoy it down there. I'm going to be honest, Nick. I did not see it going in that direction. <laughs> yeah, I thought we, we were putting you underneath Stephen House. It got to the stage where I literally started thinking about my geography classes and going, <laughs> what? Or, or thinking about the World Cup when it was in Brazil, going, what cities? Yeah, <laughs> well, you got Sao Paulo with that, didn't you? <laughs> I was gonna, my, my next one was going to be Belo Horizonte. I was just going to chuck them out there. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming along. Tell the people at home where they can find more of you online, Nick. Uh, Instagram's the best one. Nick Bright uh, on there or Nick Bright DJ on Twitter because I do a little bit of that as well. Yeah, you been do. in the records. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he did, did it in Malia for two years apparently. The mix and blend. What, were you there? <laughs> yeah, I was there. <laughs> uh, remember, this is a new show, so we want your feedback in the comments. We're going to invite guests from other clubs along each week to put suggestions in the comments for people that you would like to see on here. Subscribe if you're new for more videos like this, and we will see you next time on Squawker.